Well, this is actually my second Zoom call, so I'm glad it's working. Oh, <laughs> yes, completely. Yeah, well done. Good morning. Good morning, Counselor. This is my 500 Zoom call, and I barely got on. <laughs> <laughs> I made it through three years of the pandemic without ever being on Zoom. <laughs> Well, let's hope one day soon we can put an end to all Zoom meetings. Hey, good morning, everyone. We have quorum, so we can begin. I will call this meeting to order at 10.02 a.m. And I will begin by reading the land acknowledgement. The city of Borald is situated on treaty land. This land is steeped in the rich history of the First Nations, such as the Haudenosaunee and the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe including the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. There are many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people from across Turtle Island that live and work in Niagara today. The city of Borald stands with all Indigenous people, past and present, in promoting the wise stewardship of the lands on which we live. Are there any declarations of interest today? No. None. Okay, I'm just going to let a few more people in. Okay, and can I get a mover and a seconder for the agenda, please? Moved by Councillor O'Hare and seconded by Joe. Thank you. So we will begin by doing introductions. So if you can go around the room, say your name and why you wanted to be on this committee. Councillor O'Hare, would you like to start? Sure, thank you. Um, so I'm a newly elected councillor to uh, City Hall, and uh, I'm a retired teacher uh, with the TDSB board. I was head of technology uh, with the, my specialty being woodworking, cabinet making, uh, and design and technology, um, and welding. <laughs> there you go. Um, so uh, as a teacher, you're always uh, immersed in uh, topics related to the environment. I've always been very proactive uh, in our schools. We've always been planting trees, we've been planting gardens, and I've been fully supportive of the idea that uh, all people need to do their part for Mother Nature and for our Earth. Um, so I strongly believe in this uh, committee. I know we're facing some very turbulent times with climate change upon us and uh, drastic uh, weather conditions uh, that uh, will not be letting up. And so we need to do our part and make sure that we also help educate and promote uh, things in order to uh, contribute uh, to a stronger, healthier environment. Thank you. Before we continue with introductions, I realized I forgot to call the vote for the adoption of the agenda. So I will call that now. So all those in favor of adopting the agenda? Aye. And all those opposed? That was carried. Councillor Longo, would you like to do your introduction? Uh, yes, thank you, Sydney. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anthony Longo, uh, third time councillor. Um, as Councillor O'Hare said, uh, obviously um, everybody uh, is concerned about the environment who is, who's on this committee, I'm sure. Um, last term of council, I'm sure you're aware there were some struggles, some issues that popped up uh, with the city of Thorold. And at that time, um, I was one of a few who put together an idea that maybe we should have a, a new committee that would uh, try to um, make sure that the city was uh, being responsive um, and uh, be uh, looking forward rather than reacting to issues. And I think that's what uh, hopefully this committee can do and, and we can uh, move forward and help be better stewards of our environment. Thank you. Thank you. Eva, would you like to go next? Mm -hmm. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Eva Salter, and uh, I am a resident of the city of Thorold. Um, I love this community. Uh, I live rurally and uh, have worked uh, for the province of Ontario for about 32 years, um, but I was not doing very much, very much work in my own community. I was a consultant, regional advisor serving uh, the Ministry of Culture, Tourism, Sport, Recreation, Seniors, etc. 
and working with municipalities throughout Ontario, um, including conservation authorities, many not-for-profit organizations, as well as um, the for-profit sector where projects were on the table that required that kind of a partnership. Uh, so now I am retired as of June, 2022, and I have what I consider lots of experience in working on many different kinds of issues, uh, including issues related to environment and natural re resources uh, through the Grand River Conservation Authority. Uh, and I am very pleased that I can now be part of the city of Thorold and this, this advisory committee and other advisory committees uh, and give back to the community that I, I love so much. So thanks. Thank you. Joe. Good morning, everybody. I'm Joe Bertola. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, residents of Thorold for about 34 years. We currently live in the uh, Calcutt Walker House, which is designated under the Ontario Heritage Act. Um, my first experience with um, environmental issues goes back to a number of years, maybe about 25 years ago in my workplace, where I was chair of the Health and Safety Committee. And you know, we were dealing with uh, internal uh, emissions exposures to the workers and external outside um, into the community within a manufacturing facility. But back then in the 90s, you really weren't, when you were exposing to the outside neighborhood, you were thinking more about the harmful effects that would uh, affect the people living in the neighborhood, not really what was happening on the ground, which did come shortly after. And in, my workplace with the local union we had, we didn't have an environmental committee, but when I was going to national conferences and council meetings, I would sit in on the environment caucuses and listen to what was going on then. And it, it, you know, it left thoughts in my mind to come home. And uh, over the years, my wife and I, we sort of implemented some of these ideas in our own property and our garden. Uh, we started eliminating pesticides and herbicides from our garden. We went with uh, more native plants that were drought resistant. We started implementing stormwater strategies to save the water for gardening in our, uh, our own uh, property. But it really, my interest really took off about six years ago when I got into making uh, nesting habitats for native bees. And it introduced me to uh, a whole different uh, a group of people that had uh, 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 really serious intentions on uh, protecting the environment. And in the last couple of years, the trajectory has gone straight up. I've collaborated with uh, several people that are now promoting my products. And these people live anywhere from California to BC to Alberta, several around the uh, GTA. And one, um, collaborator that I have, and I, I would strongly recommend everybody on this committee check out their website, and it's the Eco House in Hamilton. It uh, is an old farm that uh, the Stone Farmhouse has been converted into an environmental learning academy uh, run by a group called Green Venture, and this is a school that uh, has a curriculum that is directed at kids from age five up to 24, teaching them how to be uh, basically land stewards. And I've, I've just been blown away whenever I've been out on that property, participating at any events. And um, they've, been, they've been gracious enough to promote my product. I'm actually gonna be in Hamilton tomorrow at a, an event being hosted by them. It's a CD Saturday, it's at the Hamilton uh, Public Library. And I'm looking forward to that meeting a lot of people that uh, are involved in that uh, organization. So let's, I think I can bring a bit of information and some suggestions to this committee. Uh, kudos to Councillor Longo for uh, bringing this idea to the city and, uh, and successfully lobbying to have the city commit to the, uh, this committee. Thank you. Thank you. John, would you like to go next? Oh, sure. Um, my name is John Hamilton. I've lived in Thorold for two and a half years now. So I'm a newcomer, um, which I think may give me a different perspective some, from some others. Um, my uh, career, I won't go over the whole of my career because you don't want to know. 
But I did uh, work for the Ontario Ministry of the Environment back in the days when we were funding sewage treatment and water treatment plants. Um, I've worked most of my career in healthcare in the public, uh, private, and not for profit sectors. Most recently in the office of the Chief Medical Health Officer for Vancouver Coastal Health, where I was hired to coordinate pandemic planning and then went on to involve myself in all kinds of projects, including uh, the 2010 Winter Olympics and uh, so forth. My interest in the environment goes all the way back to the days when I worked in the Ontario Ministry of the Environment, which is about 40 years ago now, uh, I blush to admit. Um, what more can I say? I'm an avid gardener. Um, my perspective on all of this, I think, is informed by my work in public health. I think we probably face an urgent crisis, public health crisis, in trying to mitigate the impacts of climate change. And um, so that's a perspective that I bring to this as well. I too am very grateful uh, to Councillor Longo for initiating this enterprise and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you, Linda. You are muted. Hi, my name's Linda Borland and I'm uh, a retired teacher. Um, I started teaching in Port Colburn, uh, married, moved to Chatham, uh, finished my year as 25 years in Waterloo. So I've been a longtime environmentalist and um, have environmental specialist qualifications that I took um, through uh, Frank Glue in Waterloo. Um, <clears throat> I've always been promoting different things in my in a classroom for um, environmental uh, specialists environmentalists and also made sure that um, I took my children, uh, my, my students to an outdoor education center every year for one program or, or another. And we did a lot of things within the school as well. The last school I taught in, we um, planted several uh, native gardens. Uh, one was uh, a hillside of um, uh, sumac and nine bark and a service berry and um, another was um, a hillside of um, uh, Labrador tea, gray dogwood, Carolinian rose. Um, we planted a windbreak of cedars. We planted uh, Iroquois potatoes and um, we planted a lot of uh, different flowers, uh, native sunflowers and, and uh, different, different kinds of native sunflowers on another hillside. So it was, it was quite a, 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 I guess it was a, a, an adventure for over five years in this school, which we, and we included all the children in, the, in that. So, and um, when I moved to this area, I taught science, um, primary, junior, intermediate science for teacher candidates at Brock. And um, also uh, did a lot of project wild workshops for the teacher candidates to get them to use the Project Wild um, courses, which are for 12, um, one to 13, one to 12 anyway. And um, also um, <clears throat> I was um, working with the Ontario Society for Environmental Education for a fair number of years. Um, Bill Andrews being one uh, member that some people may know. He was a well-respected researcher. And um, in Toronto, I remember Bill saying that um, he, he, didn't, um, he didn't actually mow his lawn much. And one year, a great big millet uh, <laughs> grew up in his lawn. The neighbors weren't too happy, but he said it was beautiful. So <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, so I've been a longtime environmentalist, um, interested in environmental um, <clears throat> education and uh, the environment. Uh, we have one small natural garden in our, our, on our property. It looks a little wild with a lot of um, milkweed that have uh, <clears throat> come into it. But um, we need to correct that, but it will stay wild and we will um, eventually um, have different kinds of um, plants in our in our garden. I, I was at my garden club, I belong to the Garden Club of Niagara, and we had um, a speaker that spoke on uh, native species 
uh, and encouraged everyone to plant native species and um, gave us a, a booklet that was very handy to refer to, to decide what we wanted to plant. So um, involved in different ways in the environment and uh, enjoy working uh, towards environmental change and um, working, working towards bettering our life in, in, uh, in, in Thorold. We've been here 18 years. Perfect, thank you. Leslie, would you like to go next? I've had computer problems over the last little while. Nobody wants to hear that story. Um, I guess I've always been interested in the environment, but back in 1980, uh, just before I had my fourth child, uh, there was a proposal in Thorold for a house waste site at Walker Brothers Quarries. And um, I was pregnant with my fourth child. Um, and I went to the open house and at the open house, there were a couple of reporters, there were a couple of staff, there were people from the proponent and maybe one other person other than my husband and I. And the newspaper article the next day read, nobody's concerned about a house of waste site in Thorpe. And so we started uh, a citizens group. We ended up um, having the government pull out as a component. Uh, the project was dropped and uh, the provincial government then uh, set up a corporation to examine the whole province for the best type of site to handle hazardous waste from our industry. Um, that awoke an interest in the environment. And I followed what was going on in thorough politics at the time um, and um, the region. And the region started a um, group called the Ec um, Economic um, Ecological Environmental Advisory Committee. And actually I was one of the first people that was put onto that. I then got hired at the region because I had contacts with groups all over Ontario and into the United States due to uh, concerns in the 1980s about how we treated hazardous waste. Um, Lois Gibbs um, was a friend. Um, we talked many times on things that were going on in the Love Canal. Um, the region hired me at, to create um, something that the public could get involved in at the early stages of proposals, whether it was environment or any other type. And I um, decided on a conference because I had been to many all over the region or in all over Ontario um, and ended up uh, my head speaker was the head of Laidlaw. And Laidlaw in 1984 had just come up with the blue box. And actually it was our conference at the region of Niagara that introduced the blue box to the province of Ontario. From that, um, I started, I was um, asked to work for the Ontario Waste Management Corporation when they were looking at the province uh, and finding the best technology, the best site to manage industrial waste. And I worked there for years. Um, they went to a hearing uh, and found out that the biggest problem in any one of our landfills is salt. So there's a lot of problems in how you treat the waste that's left from past this waste. You can either burn it or bury it. And burying it, the salt gets into groundwater and causes all sorts of problems. And it leaves a sort of like a trail for other hazardous materials to get into your groundwater. So that's not an option. Anyway, 
Um, when I left OWMC, I um, had another concern. I was a nurse at one point. Um, and I have written four books that have been published. Um, not about this subject at all. So I won't mention what it is. Um, but um, I did that. And then I was seconded to be the president for the Thorold Horticulture Society. Uh, when it started, interest in horticulture um, seven years ago was a lot less than it is today. COVID has made a lot of people gardeners or a lot of people concerned about the environment. Um, so I'm the president of the Thorold Horticulture Society. I'm also the district director for all of the Ontario Horticultural Association um, district or societies from uh, Niagara River to Dunville and from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie. Uh, there are 13 societies and I direct them. Um, and we are very concerned about the environment and always have been, have a lot of people that were around 40 years ago when I started. One of the biggest problems that happened that Margarita Howe from Operation Clean suggested was going to happen was that we were going to get complacent as a society. And I think in the 90s, after we got rid of the bad proposal for a hazardous waste facility in our community, uh, and we looked at the province and the issue, um, it became far more complex than anyone had ever imagined. But people like myself, had young children. We went back home to take care of our kids. We all did. Um, they formed the Ministry of the Environment. They were coming out when we asked them, when there were concerns. We figured we'd done our job. We went back home. My daughter was five years old when we fought Walker Brothers and had W5 here doing a story about it. She's now 45 and nothing's changed. Absolutely nothing has changed. The only thing we don't have is as many um, people looking at the problem. So anything I come across that's environmentally related, I want part of. And that's why I apply to it. Perfect. Thank you. Carrie, would you like to make your introduction? Thanks, Sydney. Uh, my name is Carrie Royer, and I work for the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority. My role at the Conservation Authority is in community engagement, community outreach. I have a background in ecosystem restoration, which lends itself well to a lot of the community stewardship projects that I help to coordinate. Um, and I'm the um, NPCA appointed uh, person on the uh, on the committee. So I appreciate being here, and it's really great to uh, to meet all of you. And uh, also avid gardener, avid uh, promoter of native plants and native species. So I really like to hear that so many people are, are doing that in their own backyards. And um, just looking forward to hearing um, how uh, we can collaborate more with the city of Thorold. We've collaborated with them on, on some projects um, in the past. And um, working with our municipal partners is one of the great ways that we can improve habitat in like public parks and also encouraging um, that kind of activity on private lands as well. 90% of the peninsula is uh, privately owned. So if we focus just on parks, we're not going to get as far as if we're, you know, working with the community as well. And uh, just I have a similar role with other um, environmental advisory committees um, in Port Coburn and Niagara-on-the-Lake. So I can also help make some connections with those advisory committees if there was interest in collaborating on, on anything. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Megan. Sorry about that. I was trying to find my mouse to unmute myself. Um, hi, my name is Megan Burbeck. I'm a senior planner here at the City of Thorold, um, and I'm your staff liaison for the 
Environmental Climate Change and Biodiversity Committee, and I'm excited to meet and help you where I can. Thank you. And I am Sydney. I work for the clerk's department as the legislative assistant. My role will be I will attend each meeting and I will take the minutes and then circulate them. And then I will also write the agendas, circulate the agendas and send out the meeting invites and everything like that. So now that we're done introductions, we'll move on to item six of the agenda, selection of chair and vice chair. So I will now call for nominations for the chair and I will need a mover and a seconder for each nominee. Councillor O'Hare. There we go. Uh, thank you, Sydney. Uh, through you, Sydney, I'd like to nominate uh, Joe Pratula as uh, chair of this committee. Okay, can I have a second? Second, second by Linda. Joe, do you accept your nomination? Yes. Sorry. Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will call a second and third time for nominations for the chair. Okay, so can I get a mover and a seconder to close the nominations for the chair? So moved. Sure. Um, moved by Linda, seconded by Councillor Longo. All those in favor of closing the vote or closing the nominations? Aye. Sorry, so all those in favor? Aye. All right, all those opposed, that carried. So there being only one nominee, please join me in congratulating committee chair, Joe Pritula. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This is very humbling. This is quite a crew. <laughs> so I will now call for nominations for vice chair. Councilor O'Hare. Uh, I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Eva Salter uh, for vice chair. Okay, can I have a seconder? Seconded by Joe. Linda or Eva, do you accept your nomination? I do. Thank you. Okay. I will call a second and third time for nominations for the vice chair. Okay. Can I get a mover and seconder to close the nominations for vice chair? Moved by Linda and seconded by Carrie. All those in favor of closing the nominations? Okay. All those opposed? And that carried. So there being only one nominee, please join me in congratulating committee vice chair, Eva. So we'll have Joe take over to chair the rest of the meeting. Joe, if you would like to check your emails, I will just take a second to send you the script for the remainder of the meeting. Okay. I'm just printing this right now. Councillor O'Hare or Councillor Longo. Whoops. Uh, wait a minute. Yes, thanks, Sydney. Just just a couple quick questions while Joe's bringing that up. Just from a counselor standpoint, can you clarify whether myself and Councillor O'Hare are voting members of this committee? Yes, uh, counselors are able oh. to vote and they're able to motion and second. Okay, great. And just one more question regarding the chair and vice chair. Um, some committees do it differently. Are our chair and vice chair for the entire term or do we elect them annually? I will have to confirm with Matthew. I believe they're for the entire term, but I can confirm and bring that back to you. Yeah, that's great. I just didn't see that in the terms of reference. So if you it, could look into that. Thank uh, you. Uh, Councilor Longo, I believe um, in the, the older terms of reference that it was on a yearly basis, but with it being revised, it looks like they have taken that uh, option out. Okay, if we can... Uh, 
move forward with the rest of the meeting. Um, there is no correspondence that I'm aware of right now. So let's go to the committee business. Um, as I uh, mentioned, uh, when we're looking at a work plan goals for the term, I did mention um, the Eco House in Hamilton. What I would like, I would really like people just to check out their website and, and look at what they do in terms of um, educating people in the community and the work projects that they have going on within Hamilton. Some of them are going to be beyond our scope. They, uh, because they're an educational facility, they get funding from the province, plus the city of Hamilton funds them for some of the projects they're involved in. For example, they have one project that's called Deep Paving, and it involves um, going into the areas of the city of Hamilton where there's an excess amount of concrete in business districts, and they will remove a certain amount of the concrete and, and uh, install pollinator gardens. So that might be something beyond our scope because the province is involved in that, and the city's involved in it. Uh, they are involved with, uh, you know, your rain barrel programs. Um, they even go to the extent of uh, performing energy audits on houses. Um, it's, it's, it's endless what they do. And I think if you do look at what they do, uh, we can come back at the next meeting and maybe we can bounce around some of these ideas and, and uh, establish some type of uh, goals that we're going to look at in the short term and then build from there. Um, any comments? Tim? Yeah, uh, it's through you, Joe. Um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of baby steps in the beginning to sort of plot our Root, but uh, all of these uh, resources are certainly ones that we should tap into. So thank you for that. I'll be checking that out. Yeah, uh, Ava. Uh, yes, I I agree with with Tim um, that this is a, a, a wonderful opportunity to take a look at what might be applicable for us in Florald. But I'm also very interested in finding out, perhaps from from Tim or from. Uh, Anthony, uh, in regards to the terms of reference, um, the goals and purpose, there are five very, very important strategic priorities that have been identified. And I'm wondering if there are any initiatives that council was also considering in making these the five priorities uh, to be dealt with. So, can either Tim or, or Anthony provide some overview? You want to take that, Tim, or would you like me to? Thank you. Uh, to you again, Joe. Thank you very much. Um, so let me just talk ab about a couple of things. But before I do, I also, too, want to thank Councillor Longo for taking the initiative and uh, starting this committee. Um, it's a very important committee uh, and uh, we'll have a lot of tough decisions and a lot of hard work to do, but uh, it's so important. I'm really grateful that uh, council supported this idea to put it in place. And I also want to thank uh, Councillor Longo for uh, his guidance and ideas. As a new councillor, uh, you sometimes feel a little bit uh, uh, over immersed with so many things going on. And uh, I appreciate his support in this. And it was he who um, suggested I bring some of the ideas that uh, we're working on um, to this group because we'll be turning to you for suggestions and for uh, ideas on how to move some of these things forward. So I'm going to talk about two things very briefly. Uh, it'd be uh, both topics we'll probably uh, reintroduce at our next meeting with a more uh, documented format so everybody can have something in front of them and understand uh, what we're trying to do. So the first one is uh, Thorold does not have a mature tree protection bylaw. And uh, this is one that um, I've already brought to council uh, and with their support, uh, and it was a unanimous support, I should say. Uh, the uh, motion was to uh, um, uh, delve, have staff delve into uh, tree protection bylaw so that we can uh, start this uh, initiative and uh, um, get it passed um, once we're ready. So 
there's a lot of work on that to be done. Initially, uh, I thought that the uh, bylaw, the tree protection bylaw would encompass uh, both private and uh, public properties. Uh, there are some challenges there and we'll discuss that as we move forward and I'll look forward to hearing uh, your advice and ideas about it. So that's one thing. The second thing is that I've uh, already um, uh, gone to uh, City Hall and spoken with our CAO, our mayor, um, and now I'm currently working with our uh, head of finance and our city clerk, uh, Matthew Turnham, on um, this initiative. And this initiative is, uh, let me just grab my paper. So, okay, so what it is, it's a city backed fundraising campaign. The whole initiative is to create a separate reserve account to pay for trees and the fees to, to plant them and look after them uh, throughout Thorold. Right now, our tree budget is minuscule. And uh, what I'm hoping to achieve through this is to have public and industry and uh, even citizens contribute to this so that we create uh, a fund whereby we can draw um, out of the fund in order to purchase trees, uh, plant trees, and uh, just um, improve Thorold's weak tree canopy. Um, I've come up with a name for it. Um, it's a long-term goal. It's a 50-year program, and uh, it's going to be called 10,000 Trees uh, Project. So um, if you break it down, uh, I think that a manageable number would be 200 per year. Uh, and uh, these are just starting points, but there's lots of information to be uh, uh, gathered. And uh, I will turn to you as well for ideas. Um, I already have a strong uh, idea from Jeff Holman, who uh, is at the city, and he recommended that we create our own uh, tree nursery out at uh, the cemetery. There's lots of land there, a place where we can uh, start to, um, or where we'll be able to harvest trees ourselves. Um, and uh, that certainly would be an ongoing project. So these are, are a couple of initiatives. Uh, my perspective is that um, every council member that I speak to is very supportive of uh, building a greener Thorold, uh, a healthier Thorold, and uh, it would it's just very important that we get it right, right from the beginning. So um, that's some of the things that we're working on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tim. Does anybody uh, else have anything to add? Councilor Longo? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just to add on for, to Councillor O'Hare from a Councillor perspective, and first of all, I'd like to applaud Councillor O'Hare. He's very, uh, very, some very good ideas, very energetic, and he's going to be uh, great for the City of Thorold. Um, I, I just wanted to speak a little bit about committees and how they work for, for people who are new to committees. Um, today, I was sent the terms of reference. I'm, I'm reading them over as we have a quick discussion here, but I think everybody needs to um, read the, the terms of reference over. We need to understand what our mandate is and what our goal and purpose is, okay? As a committee, um, and, and again, if you're new to this, you're gonna realize how slow government moves and it is frustrating at times, but I think uh, we need to start, start with baby steps. We need to um, figure out what's important to this committee and set some goals and, and, and try to accomplish some small things um, and go from there. One thing I would like to see from, from an overall city council perspective, and I'll try to explain this briefly. When reports are brought to council, um, regardless of what the report is for, it always talks about impacts. And we always talk about financial considerations how this impacts um, from a community perspective. And what I would like to see, and hopefully this committee can bring a recommendation we can bring the council, is that every time, no matter what it is, we look at the environmental impact of our decisions. We need to make sure council is aware that everything we do 
has an environmental impact and they need to take that into consideration. So that's one of my little steps I'd like to take with this committee and hopefully we can go from there. Okay, so thanks. Very good, thank you. Um, anybody else? Uh, Leslie, you got your hand up? Yeah, um, am I muted? Um, I, I want to talk to Tim's idea about the trees. I think that's fantastic. I don't think people realize that the park behind the senior center, the Thorold Horticulture Society planted most of those trees for people that died that were part of our community. Um, we also plant trees for every, um, we, usually every year now that our membership's getting older at the cemetery. So we've been doing that for years. So it's a great opportunity if you're given uh, a place to grow some trees to do it. Um, and I can't say you know anything uh, negative about it. I, I just am happy for somebody's bringing it to the table. But it reminded me about one other thing. So um, I don't know whether a lot of you have walked down Welland um, Street South uh, and the boulevards are all planted. Um, there's some beautiful properties. Um, people have spent a lot of time out there, but um, on Chapel Street where it's done as well, there was one um, property where the people moved out trying to sell their house, then COVID came and they maintain it a bit, but they put in a whole bunch of cactus on the sidewalk, right beside the sidewalk that has grown and is growing over the sidewalk. And so my husband saw that walking our dog. So we talked to Jeff uh, Holman and um, said, is that legal? And he said, well, I've got somebody to go out and look at it. And he came back to me and he said, well, technically any planting on the boulevard in Thorold is illegal because there is no bylaw. And I said to him, the city of St. Catharines has a new environmental group, um, which was the St. Catharines Horticulture Society. It's now Garden City Gardeners. And one of the areas they're concerned about is boulevards as well. And I was the resource person. So I created a huge document of photocopy bylaws across the province. So I said to Jeff, um, the thorough a garden club is interested in Boulevard. St. Catharines is interested. Now I'm wondering whether this committee might be the focus because I'm going to start up a, a committee made up of some of the people that are concerned in St. Catharines and want a proper bylaw and people in Thorold that are concerned and would like a bylaw, including city staff. Um, and so it might be this committee that any suggestions come from to you and then you would take it to council. Wouldn't that be right, Council Longo? That's how it would be done. Um, I'm just a councillor here, but I'll give my opinion as long as it's within the mandate of uh, our yeah. term of reference. Okay, so um, that that's just the councillor's opinion. I'm only one of yeah. Uh, I'm just interested when when um, Tim is talking about trees because that's an excellent idea and bringing the public in then you get the support and you know I just did volunteer hours for our Mafra and we're a small community and we had almost fourteen hundred volunteer hours last year uh, and when you add a dollar price to that to the community for the work that we do, hiring speakers and bringing them in on native plants and other issues. Um, that really makes a difference when you sit back and you add the dollar signs to the ideas. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you, um, Leslie. If I can just add something here, when you're talking about the uh, boulevard plantings, um, my wife and I, we're at the corner of Portland and um, Carlton Street South. And we were actually the very first house in this neighborhood to plant on the boulevard. And this goes back into probably the early 90s. Yeah. And this was when uh, 
City Hall was in the old Warriman School. And one day, and so councillors and the mayor are driving by our house all the time. And one day I was out working in the garden and on the boulevard and there was a car stopped on uh, Portland and there was two ladies in the car and they congratulated us on me. And he said, they said, your, your boulevards look beautiful. And they said, what, what's Thorold's position on boulevard planting? And I said, well, I've been told that it's not legal. But I said, we have the mayor and councillors driving by our house every day. And, and actually some of them stopped and said, this looks really nice. Now these two girls were from what I think it was called, um, there was a green initiative going, a committee back in St. Catharines at the time, greening committee. And they were trying to um, pressure the city into doing away with um, asphalt strips between the curb and the sidewalk that might have been only a foot or a foot and a half wide, which was too narrow for a lawnmower. And they were hoping that the city would come up with some kind of initiation. And it's just, it was just funny that this has been something that hasn't been legal for years. And as you talk about Welland Street South and Chapel and uh, it's uh, some of them are very well maintained. A couple have been growing a little wild, but uh, no, it's something that I think maybe we can we can work on with that as well. Uh, some people uh, really love it. I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Did you have something earlier, Carrie? Oh, go, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to share. Um from the perspective of the Conservation Authority when uh, some of the things that Councillor O'Hare was speaking to in terms of planting trees, um, we have successfully worked with a number of municipalities to do um, naturalization projects in some of their areas that are less actively used that can be more so naturalized. Um, we don't typically plant the big sort of boulevard, large stock caliper trees, um, but if there's areas in the world parks that can be naturalized or sort of um, just planted with sort of smaller trees and shrubs that would benefit wildlife. That is something we have worked uh, with our, our other municipalities um, to do that. And we do have a restoration grant program available that comes up every year around November. That's available mm -hmm. to um, private citizens as well as municipalities. If there was a, a particular park or something in mind, um, as long as it has some sort of linkage to improving water quality or habitat or that, like it, they're, they're, gauged based on the the habitat that you're providing um but that's an option and then we've also maybe the two councillors have heard of the um, mpca has applied to the government of canada's two billion tree program where we're hoping to work with all of our municipal partners to identify areas that could be planted um, and do this in a coordinated effort across all of the niagara region uh, with the conservation authority helping to sort of identify those areas so, so those are just two initiatives that are sort of um, in line with some of the things that you speak to that are already happening and, and can happen. So just wanted to share that. We've successfully actually worked with the city of Thorold recently to do a pollinator garden at the new Battle of Beaver Dams um, park um, in memory of uh, Mickey DeFruccio, who was a board member of the NPCA for many, many years and strong advocate for pollinators and pollinator gardens. So um, yeah, that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Um, anybody else have any uh, comments before we move on? I would like to, uh, um, if sure. I may, uh, on the subject of funding for trees, Tree Canada has a grant program. Uh, at, the grants range from $3,500 to $10,000. Their application process also starts in the fall. Uh, they will provide up to $3,500 to a school yard uh, to plant trees and $10,000 to a community to fund the planting of trees. So that's something you might want to keep in mind when it comes to, to finding funding for trees. I know it's not a lot of money, but it's some money. Um, and uh, Canada, so uh, they know what they're about. Um, so that's an option. Um, are we in a roundtable discussion now or are we just talking about trees? I think we, if we got nothing else to um, add to, um, you know, goals for the terms, we can move to the, actually, we were going to be doing the uh, uh, meeting schedule before we go to round table. So do we want to move to the... No, uh, I think uh, Eva has a question. Okay, Eva. 
Uh, you're muted. Okay. So some, some great, great ideas being put forward. Uh, something that I have become very aware of because of my involvement in two other committees is an incredible master plan that was created by the city of Thorold called the Parks Trails Recreation Master Plan. And um, in, in reviewing it um, against the terms of reference for this particular committee, um, I'm, I feel that we need to take a look at this master plan and see if there's anything that will emerge as a key priority that we may wish to consider. And whether it's this year or uh, within the next three years, we identify something that for sure is part of this committee's um, mandate to, to address. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, perhaps. Thank you. Perhaps, perhaps um, Sydney can, can send the link out to everyone uh, to take a look at it. It's a big document. I just had it printed. It's over 300 pages. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, gonna be a good committee. There's been some great ideas are coming forward. Uh, if there's nothing else to add, um, can we uh, move on to uh, setting up our schedule for the meetings? Um, do you want to stay with, uh, what is this, the first Friday of the month? And we'll keep the time at uh, 10 a.m. Is there anybody that uh, has any suggestions or any conversation on this? Seeing none, can I have a motion to, uh, hey, Linda? I'll move first Friday every month at 10 a.m. Okay, can I have a seconder? Councillor Herrick, um, all those in favor? Opposed to any? Here we go. Okay, I guess we can move on to a uh, round table if, um, if anybody has to offer. I'm gonna go in order of how I see you on my screen right now. Uh, let's start with you, Ava. Okay. Um, as part of, of the kind of experiences I've had for the last 32 years working in communities. Um, there is one in particular, well, there are actually several, but there's one that I would like to speak to. And that is uh, the creation of culture and culture defined to include natural heritage and um, basically about a hundred different resources, other cultural resources, um, but that culture has been deemed as the fourth pillar of sustainability in more than 75 communities or municipalities in Ontario, representing 77% of the population of Ontario. Um, and so the other, the other pillars um, together with culture as that fourth pillar of sustainability are of course, economic development, the social equity agenda, uh, and, and environmental responsibility. And the reason I, I point this out is because as, as four pillars, this particular, um, this particular advisory committee is going to be relating to all of those different um, pillars and the important the, the real importance is the integration to ensure success. So what I would like to do is to share uh, a very, very brief um, overhead uh, plan that, that will outline what municipal cultural planning is and why, should, why we should be concerned. Um, and then a second initiative is the importance of measuring whatever goals we have and whatever activity plans we have um, that we're able to measure so that we're able to report on an annual basis on outcomes, actual outcomes. Um, and I've got documentation on that as well. I won't share that immediately, but I'm just making you aware of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, have you got something that you wanna add? Uh, I do. I have uh, maybe start at the macro level and um, talk about the Green Municipal Fund, which is administered by the um, 
um, our Canadian Federation of Municipalities, it's federal funding. They're very hot on retrofitting arenas to make them less uh, productive of greenhouse gases. So that's a, an item that I thought we might want to consider is looking at the total arena and how we might uh, bring that into compliance with uh, our goals. Mm -hmm. uh, planting trees, of course, is, is um, Ontario is up on the last Friday in April to the first Sunday in May. And I was hoping that maybe we might be able to do something around that and involve, if possible, the Thorold High School. Um, I live in the downtown and I'm a pedestrian. So I spend a lot of time on the ground and in parking lots. Uh, because the shortest distance between two points is usually through a parking lot. And my observations are, and um, Pelosi would say, dog doo doo everywhere. You, in all the parks, in all the sidewalks, on the well, the well and canal trail is used as essentially a litter box for dogs in the neighborhood. Um, and I'm an old Vancouverite and we don't like garbage and dog poop -poo everywhere. Yeah. So, um, and I know I've looked into the um, animal control bylaw and it does mention cleaning up excrement after your dog, but I've never seen any signage anywhere. I've never seen any notion of a penalty if you don't. Uh, one of my favorite things walking on the Wellington Canal Trail is seeing um, people have picked up their dog excrement in a bag and they fling it into the trees so it hangs from the branches. Um, the litter is a real problem. I have uh, personally walked uh, along the trail from Regent Street to the Trillium Railroad crossing with yellow rubber gloves on and plastic, big plastic garbage bags. And I can fill a plastic garbage bag um, with plastic litter from out of that, that beautiful ditch, which has been landscaped to, you know, house birds and, and, and other animals, and it's full of plastics, which also break down into microplastics, which run directly into Lake Ontario, get into the uh, drinking water, and the consequences are, are still being discovered. Uh, so that's something that really concerns me, uh, is this, this uh, litter and dog excrement everywhere. And I think that falls within the purview of the built environment, you know, um, I think greening parking lots is something we might want to look at when someone spoke about tearing mm -hmm. up pavement. Um, yeah. It's not necessarily about tearing it up. Uh, there are all kinds of things that one can do to green a parking lot, including um, you know, uh, putting uh, solar panels over top uh, to provide shade and to generate electricity. Um, that's a, a, a project that I'd like to look at as well. Um, and what else have I got? Oh, our chestnut trees, all the horse chestnuts have um, green yardia, which is to drop their leaves early. And uh, one of the things that needs to be done in order to sort of mitigate that is to um, prune those trees. I don't know whether they're all on private property or public property, but the, the, it's a, a, a real issue, I think. Um, oh, uh, I spoke about the arena, spoke about planting trees, garbage, chestnut trees, greening parking lots, Tree Canada grants. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That was quite a bit to add. Um, <laughs> Carrie, you're next. Uh, I don't have anything further to share right now other than what uh, has already been shared in terms of initiatives shared by the Conservation Authority and um, just I know that there are some really great active community groups in Thorold already working on things and we've successfully um, engaged some of the local public schools um, so far in participating in pollinator gardens and like the kids are always really keen to get involved with that kind of stuff. Um, Westmount Public School added a pollinator garden to their um, school ground last year, which was an initiative brought forward by the parent council. And we also engaged this, um, 
Prince of Wales School to come out and help pol- plant the pollinator garden at um, the Battle of Beaver Dams Park. And sometimes it's just a phone call and you get to the right person. And next thing you know, you have 30 kids out there actively engaged in planting these gardens. Um, so I just can't stress enough the, the, the way that programs and pollinator gardens and plantings and things like that become successful when you're engaging the community. Um, it's the people, as John was saying about walking around, cleaning up garbage, it's the people that live in the community that care about it the most. Um, and so they're most likely the ones to want to be engaged and involved. And when you involve them early on in sort of the the planting and that kind of thing, um, you tend to have them a little bit engaged for a while. Um, and, and we've seen with any pollinator gardens that we've done, when you have a, an active community group of friends of or a neighborhood association involved with the ongoing care and maintenance of these projects, they tend to be much more successful. Planting them is one thing, after care and maintenance is another. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with pollinator gardens, if you just plant them and expect them to look beautiful, then it just looks like a, a messy thing that people will complain about the weeds. But if somebody's carefully maintaining it, pulling weeds and putting mulch down, um, then it helps to make it look a little bit prettier and helps to get more buy-in. So Absolutely. that's all. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Linda? And I was just going to um, possibly echo what Carrie is saying, uh, including the students in the schools in the local areas, um, because um, it's the students that um, it's their environment that we are planting trees for and pollinator gardens and whatever else. And they need to be involved in so that they know what the names of these plants are that we're planting, what the native plants are so that they when they grow up and have their own homes in their, our community, hopefully they'll be able to maintain those things. And I agree with Carrie, the maintenance planting can be done, but it's the maintain maintenance of the garden that's uh, most important to plan for before you actually start the garden. I think you should need to have a team uh, of community members in the in the um, community to maintain that. You can't expect um, the thorough um, uh, uh, workers to do all of it. And I think it's the community that needs to be involved because it's the community that is being beautified for and for the benefit of all of us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Leslie? Um, I just wanted to comment on what Linda just brought up. Um, <clears throat> I, I imagine everyone knows the knows the property at the corner of Sullivan and Collier attached to Monsignor Clancy School. Well, last year there was a proposal put together and um, from the city, uh, the Niagara District Catholic School Board and Monsignor Clancy um, to sit down and create either, well, what they said to me was it was a pollinator community garden. I said they're two trendy words. They both mm. are, have completely different meanings. However, that's what's being planned with the school um, in Thoreau. Um, and as I wear a lot of hats, so uh, as president of Thoreau Garden Club, I was asked to um, bring in resources about those two activities. And um, what happened were other priorities took um, precedent over the last year. The school board did agree to support the proposal of a, either one type of gardening uh, on that property for two years in order to get it up and started. And the whole idea that we had was what Linda was talking about, was um, bringing the community in to work with the teachers and the students, because if they ever decide to do a community garden there, they're going to need somebody that's going to take care of it when school's out in June uh, <laughs> until September. And that's the important time. So there's lots of um, issues that seem, you know, like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Um, that um, get addressed in groups that have staff and um, technical people and community, the community backing it. The only other thing I'm going to mention is, I'll bring this up again. We do, um, as Thorough Garden Club, we do speak speakers. 
uh, for a long time over the last while, well, it's been hit and miss um, Zoom meetings, uh, but I advertise them. So if you um, look us up on Facebook or on, on the internet, you will find um, some really interesting speakers talking about really important issues that we're all discussing right now. The, one other thing that's connected to that is that we ran a successful um, first annual floral garden contest last summer uh, for the year of the garden. Uh, we had a couple of winners, one veggie garden that was unbelievable, and one what I call a normal garden with almost everything else in it. And, um, we're going to do it again this year. And last year, the city was great. They did advertising for us. They collected the nomination papers. Um, and we're going to ask for that partnership again. Um, we don't... They give out gifts to, them, uh, to the winners. Um, but when I get all the, um, the different things set up for this year, one of the areas that we're going to um, expand on is business and communities. And we're going to make a category specific to them and see whether downtown Thorold will take it on um, the businesses um, and um, expand the contest and make it a more than a two year <laughs> uh, thing. But um, so. I'll probably keep bringing back things like that that are going on in the community with community groups uh, because we need to interact. It's the only way that we get our information to people like yourselves on the community on the committee that's advising our politicians. So that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's uh, well said. Um, it, um it would be quite helpful for us to understand and get to know who's working on the sidelines that we can kind of reel in and, and work with them and, and make it easier for us and uh, get them uh, connected with others and grow the group even larger. So that's, uh, that's great to hear. Um, Councillor O'Hare. Uh, Thank you very much to you, Joe. Um, I just want to, I won't uh, speak long, but just very briefly on John's, uh, a couple of John's points. I really like the idea of uh, greening parking lots. Uh, there's no reason they have to be concrete jungles, right? Um, and this is something we might have to work together with planning to kind of uh, figure out how we can do better at that. Um, with the issue of uh, um, pollution, litter, and uh, of course the uh, infamous dog poop. Uh, I too live downtown, I know it is an issue. I did an article with Thorold today on it uh, a little while ago. And uh, you know, as a councillor, speaking from a councillor perspective, we, of course we can put up 10,000 signs and, and we can issue uh, bylaw infractions uh, to the heavens. But I think our major goal is education. Um, if we can uh, somehow connect with the residents of Thorold to inspire them to understand that this is our city, uh, we all need to be a part of it and we all need to do our part. Um, this is one way that uh, it could perhaps be more effective than um, the other approaches where it's a laid back approach and someone uh, is uh, um, in the position of reading the sign and acting accordingly or not accordingly. But if we can inspire and educate, then I think we would uh, have a much greater success at um, creating um, a healthier city. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, welcome to everybody, too. I'm, I'm thrilled with this committee. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Councillor Longo. Thank you, Chair. I'll be brief here. I just want to um, let everybody know I, I really uh, look forward to working with you. This is your committee. Um, we're just here as council liaison. So um, bring your great thoughts forward and let's see what we can do, because I think we'll do a lot of uh, uh, really, really good, positive things in the next four years. Thank you. Um, 
Sydney, did you want to add anything or? Thank you. I don't have anything to add to the round table today. Okay. Um, Megan, do you have anything that you? Yes, I have uh, a, quite a few things. Um, so I'm the staff liaison. Um, so I'm here to help put together the agenda. Sydney will be the one who distributes it each week and helps with uh, the distributing of information, but I'll be the main contact for actual the information um, that's shared um, for each meeting and um, shared throughout the city. Um, there are quite a few projects that the city is currently working on that will be important for you guys um, to be aware of um, so that you are able to help uh, staff and council um, ensure that the initiatives are as successful as possible. So I'm going to hopefully put on for the next agenda uh, a few presentations that I'll, I'll do so that um, the individuals of this committee are up to date on the different projects that staff is working on slash council. Um, for uh, the terms of reference. So I think we had a wonderful start today um, in getting to meet everyone and getting to hear everyone's background and everyone's interests. Um, I think it's going to be really important to put together maybe a more uh, sound and thorough um, um, plan um, for the next four years. So this will be a plan. Um, a few of you guys sit on the Heritage Committee. Uh, difference between the Heritage Committee and this committee is that the Heritage is, has been around and it's quite established per se, where this is our very first meeting of this committee. So it'll be good to really solidify what, um, what we'll be doing. Uh, but for the committees that I'll be the staff liaison, I'm uh, going to try and really get a good sound um, terms of reference. So I'm going to send out an email afterwards today with kind of a document that will help you um, maybe put together a little research before our next meeting so that we can get a good um, idea of what we want to do. So I can't share my screen right now. Sydney, can you help me with that? Sure, one second. Yeah. Okay, you should be good now. Okay. So um, a little background um, on me. Can you guys see this Word document? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'm a senior planner mm -hmm. here. Uh, my background, I've also been a climate change coordinator for municipality. Um, so I do have a bit of background on putting together working documents to uh, kind of guide the future of projects. Um, so this is kind of... Uh, a deconstructed version of that. So some areas that we'll, we might want to consider when putting together a document, this is obviously just a draft, um, is figuring out focus areas. So um, an example of one could be an administrative focus area, um, figuring out the action items, um, figuring out the ease of implementation, um, measures, kind of like Eva mentioned, it's very important that we have measures to understand if we've, how well we've achieved that action item, figuring out maybe what people are going to be the focus point for those action items, what sort of impact those action items are actually going to do, the cost, and maybe when over the next four years we would want to do those action items. Um, so... Today we had a great discussion on actually what we're interested in and topics, but it'll be really good to to make this into more of a fine tooth um, document that we can track in after the four years or even after two years, look back on and see how far we've come. Um, so that will be one of my tasks for you guys to to do so I can make sure I'm helping you the best that I can and make sure that you guys are helping um, yourself as best as possible. Um, those are my main topics uh, of conversation. It's just um, next week I'm going to do some presentations on what staff has been doing um, or is trying to do and then helping you have more of a 
firmer understanding of what you're going to do in the next four years uh, related to the goals and purpose of the terms of reference. And I'm not the chair, but Tim has his hand up. Okay, Councillor O'Hare. So do I. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's true to you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Megan, are you able to uh, provide us with those documents? Can you send them out as blank so we can see what the, the document I just showed you? Yes. Yes, that's uh, what my goal is to have that distributed to you guys all. Um, and you guys can individually, until our next meeting, kind of brainstorm some focus areas, action items. Those will be the first main points to do is just uh, brainstorm focus areas and action items. And then at the next meeting, it'll be um, good to kind of figure out between all of your thoughts what uh, the common thread is. Um, and then once we have that, it'll be, we'll be able to fill the rest of the chart. So the first half, um, it'll be important for you guys to brainstorm and then we'll be able to um, collectively uh, figure out the last half of that chart, but that will be distributed. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, John, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, off the top of my head, no, uh, oh. but thank you for asking. Okay, um, Linda? Yeah, um, I was just um, thinking about wetlands and wetlands are very important to the health and of, of the environment. And I think they need to be preserved. Um, natural wetlands need to be preserved. They're very sensitive ecological areas. And um, instead of filling them in and building on them, they need to be preserved and built around. So that's, wetlands are extremely, extremely sensitive to the environment and for the environmental health. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anything else that anybody wants to add before we... Um... Carrie has her hand up. I don't know if you can see when people put their oh, hand up on the top yeah, corner. I, I, yeah, I see now. Sorry. I just, um, I just have a question kind of maybe for Megan, but maybe as a general awareness thing for the group. Um, I know that my manager, um, Natalie Green, is part of a climate change like a municipal group of like sort of climate change coordinators for all the municipalities, which also includes the Niagara region and I think Brock University. Um, so Megan, are you sort of a connecting link between those groups? Um, so I, I do sit on that committee. Okay, um, that's what I figured. So that's the Niagara Climate Change Municipal Communities of Practice. Brock isn't a part of it or hasn't been, maybe they've just been added, but the NPCA region and the 12 uh, lower tier municipalities. So okay. that is a part of uh, information that I would want to be putting on the agenda each month of information from that committee. Perfect. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure there was some kind of liaison because I imagine there would be similar initiatives coming forward from both groups. So thank you for providing that. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else before we move on? Okay. Our next meeting is going to be March the 3rd, I believe. And that'll be at 10 a.m. Can I have a motion to terminate the meeting? Sorry, real quick. We actually don't need motions anymore to no, adjourn. Okay. Can I can just minutes. say, time. go home, everybody. <laughs> yeah. We're at home. Okay, thank you very much. This is a wonderful group that we've assembled.